Okay, uh, welcome everyone. I'm David Haboud. I work on the product marketing team for Altium 365. Today we are going to be discussing the Altium 365 Requirements Manager powered by Valley Space. Uh, we have with us Marco Witzman, the CEO of Valley Space. Hi, Marco. Uh, and Hello. we are going to be discussing a little bit today about connecting design data and requirements for faster design with fewer errors. Uh, later, we will be looking at a demonstration by our product director, Boris Raskin. But for now, let's start going over the agenda. We're going to start off by discussing modern design process challenges and how we can work through them by crafting connectivity across design domains. Then we will start stepping into the requirements manager and how we can connect our design data and our requirements followed by a quick sneak peek of the functionality, a summary of what we've seen, and a live Q&A. Throughout the webinar, we will be initiating some polls, so go ahead and answer those as they come up. Let's get started. Smart devices are increasing throughout our, our daily lives. As the capabilities increase, the chip usage has increased a hundred times in the last 40 years. And when I say a hundred times, I mean a hundred fold. So looking at a specific example of an electric vehicle in the 80s, 1980s, a car would use 10 to 20 chips, where now a vehicle uses over 2000 chips per vehicle. In addition, in the last decade, the amount of software utilized in these products has increased 15 times. We're going from 10 million lines of code to currently 150 million lines. What we see is a continuous increase in the total cost uh, attributed to the usage of the electronics. So sticking on this car example in the 1970s, it was approximately 10%. Currently, it is around 40%. And our... Uh, Current trajectory shows that by 2030, approximately half, 50% of a vehicle's cost will come from the electronic components. In addition to that, uh, the timeline we have to produce these products is three times faster, which means we have three times less time to actually get this done. We're going from five-year timelines to two years, and we continuously need to find methods in order to speed up our process. What we find is a lot of companies are moving to more agile methodologies that incorporate principles that are being utilized in software development, for example. So splitting up your design into project phases to encourage continuous collaboration and improvement be able to have faster iterations of our designs, not necessarily completing the design, being able to iterate on the concept of the design and improve it with simulation, co-design, co-engineering, everyone working together in the different phases instead of the traditional waterfall methodology that we've used for, for decades. So with this, you need pervasive simulation and rapid prototyping to be able to test all of these outcomes and iterate quickly. We have found that electronics have traditionally been the weakest link in this hardware development process. Although the electronics are connecting both the physical and the digital aspects of the design, they are created in data silos. There is no information going from well, there is information going from place to place, but manually, you have to do it. You have to get these static file formats. You have to extract them, render them. You make paper printouts. You give them to people. You're manually exchanging data, either verbally or, as I said, giving someone a flash drive, giving someone some paper, and continuing through. And that is a huge cost to our time to market. Uh, 159 hours are spent on admitted administrative tasks 
per engineer. So for a team of six, that cost is 370000 per year, right? Just on spending time communicating, uh, trying to figure out the design intent between different domains. And, and when you have that level of miscommunication, it can ruin our product quality. Uh, this leads to defects and just issues overall, which makes us as an organization not look very good. Uh, in addition, the lack of traceability is, is increasing the amount of time to actually find things. Let's say I make a change. How does that propagate through? How does that make changes to my design uh, later on? I have to change a component. Up to 80% of designs need a, a last minute component change. Um, due to cost, due to availability issues, we, we've all been through the, the lack of availability in the last couple of years. Um, and imagine you have to make a change last minute and you have no alternatives lined up. And you make a change because you're in the middle of your design and now procurement can't find that component either later down the road and you have to start over. Uh, this leads to 2.8 board respins on average per company at a cost of $46,000. So being able to minimize the number of respins, increase communications, uh, that is really important. So we have to look at crafting connectivity across design domains. LTM has been in the electronics development industry for over 35 years. And with time, we see more and more that PCB is just one piece of the overall development puzzle. The big issues occur at the intersections across these domains. When you have cross-functional collaboration, it's really easy to mess up the, the communication of design intent. When you are speaking a different language, uh, you don't necessarily know how best to move the data because you, that's, that's not what you do every day, right? So uh, we have been expanding from our flagship product of Altium Designer to other areas to increase the, the level of communication and collaboration across the entire design process. That's where Altium 365 comes in. It's a platform in order that helps everyone come to the same table. It brings everyone from all of the different functions into a space where they can communicate. And currently over 30% of our users are not electrical engineers or designers, which are the traditional users of Altium Designer. So we are looking to partner with uh, industry experts in their fields in order to increase that communication between the different functions. And that's where Valley Space comes in. Uh, and, and we'll go into some more detail soon, but let's, let's continue through uh, the idea of bringing everyone to the same table. Having a platform involved to allow visibility across the entire process uh, of development and for all of the functions and all of the domains in the process. You can see here different levels of visibility between different people, different types of tools. We have the ability to, to uh, co-design with the mechanical environment now. We're looking at simulation, looking at co-developing, different aspects to, to bring the whole process in. So today we're gonna to be focusing on requirements that are very important, not only at the start of our design, but throughout the entire process, because those requirements need to be applied to the correct context. So this is a quick overview of the entire platform. As I mentioned, uh, since it's a platform, it enables different applications and integrations that will assist your general product development process. So connecting to the wider product development ecosystem is really important. We won't go into too many details today about all of this. Uh, we will have further webinars uh, on these topics, but today it's all about requirements manager and how we can connect our design data and our requirements. So the challenges we were really looking at addressing are the visibility of our requirements, creating a more predictable 
methodology in order to operate during the development process so that we can apply the requirements correctly in the correct context and then prove compliance of that. We need to verify and validate that all of those requirements are understood correctly and applied in the correct context. So to do that, we have incorporated real-time updates of both the requirements and the design data, collaborating in the context of all the requirements. You can directly place the requirements within any aspect of the design data, the schematic, or the PCB layout, and that's going to give us a level of digital traceability to see the who, what, when, where, and why of all these requirements. Who put that there? Why did they put that there? And, you know... Did they do it correctly? <laughs> what's, what's the status of it? So with that, I'm going to pass it on to Marco. Thank you very much, Marco. Yeah, thank you very much, David. So basically, this affects the entire life cycle of the engineering, right? It starts basically when you start a napkin with requirements engineering, then go deeply into concurrent early design. And then most of these iteration loops happen between the detailed design and simulations, the reviews and technical change management. So basically making sure that the actual design that you have in the electronics fits the requirements that you had in the first place, making sure that you do the right reviews and ensure that full traceability um, gives you the fact that A, on the one hand, all the requirements that you have um, requested to be implemented have actually been implemented. And on the other side, being able to trace back from the design why is the de design like this and being able to see, okay, this has been designed in the following way because you um, had requirements that demanded it. So with the Valley Space V model, we basically cover the entire part from specifying a product to designing the product to verifying it, right? So when you specify your product, uh, you make sure that your engineering data lives actually live inside your requirements, which means you have a data-driven approach. That means if, for example, you have the requirement that contains a voltage, like five volts as in a requirement, that five volts will be linked to formulas and to calculations and to simulations, and you will basically be able to find them back, which is the second point, in the design that you select. So the physical properties in your requirements will basically be reflected in the system and that means the entire engineering team is connected. So here you have a direct interconnection between the systems engineer, the electronics designer, um, and overall the Q&A process that basically follows. And that's how we come to the third part when you verify and validate your product. So what you do is you make sure that your actual system design meets the requirements. And here is where automatic verification validation comes in. So basically being able to on the design itself, close out um, the verification, ensure that the requirement has been implemented. And then getting out of value space or in the requirements uh, module, um, all the verification matrices that basically show you that you have the completeness of the verification validation. Oh, you have one more? So what that looks like in practice is basically from an end-to-end -end engineering perspective, right? If you are developing an entire vehicle, for example, and you have a stakeholder that asks you to increase the range of the car, then one of your engineers will basically increase the number of battery modules from 12 to 14. And then Valley Space is able to not only recalculate all the properties, so the battery mass and capacity, but also adjacent properties like charging mass, car mass, braking distance, all these other properties. So you have a full traceability of that change and the impact of that change towards the system. And then what you do is in Valley Space, uh, basically is able to re-execute simulations, update documentation, verify requirements, and notify the engineers in question. And since this entire process that in today's world, when you do that through spreadsheets, meetings, emails, and so on, would take weeks and you would probably forget to update a certain amount of these parts. With this interconnection, um, file space basically be able to bring down this time to seconds and be able to ensure that everyone is on the same page when designing. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I mean, that's one of my favorite things. Um, the fact that as you make changes it propagates through and you don't accidentally miss something i i just like 
I, I used to work in the aerospace industry and work with doors and <laughs> I'm very familiar with, with a lot of these requirements. So uh, things changing and being able to propagate through is, is very important. So looking into the, the benefits part of, of all of this, we are now going to be focusing on bringing these values together from both Valley space requirements side of things and the Altium 365 platform and being able to communicate all of the uh, all of our needs in different areas and different phases of the design process. So this is going to accelerate our process by reducing the time spent uh, trying to communicate. We are working in the context of our design. Uh, you see here. Uh, the comment functionality we have in the Altium 365 platform. This is going to enable the ability to work with requirements. So the same way you can use a comment uh, where you can put it on a single point, you can put it on an area, uh, that will work with the requirements as well. As Marco was talking about the analysis of our the impact of our changes, as things propagate through, we are able to see how one change can affect the rest of our process, the rest of the team, different people in the entire process. And automating the risk assessment and compliance of those requirements, uh, we're able to see how our changes affect the rest of the team and make plans to solve those uh, solve those issues uh, before they become a problem right getting prepared uh, just in case there's a potential that we are going to have some issues uh, on the supply chain side of things let's add a couple extra components some alternate parts or alternative parts we have the that ability as well um so Looking into the dynamic visibility and reuse of, of the requirements is really important. Being able to see where they're applied in the context of the design, both in the schematic and PCB, uh, and hopefully in the future other areas if you all find it useful. So uh, you have a, a table with real-time updates of all the requirements, so there isn't that lag of communication. When something changes, you're automatically aware of it. You can search filter for all of these requirements to find them quickly. And as you know, a project manager, see that traceability of who placed the requirements where, when, why, and the verification status. Okay, once you apply a requirement, did you meet it? The, mo the master follower feature allows things to propagate through all of those parametric uh, areas within the requirements. Let's say a component weight, as that changes, it's going to af affect the entire system. And there's no error-prone manual copy-pasting that maybe you forget to update something you know, we, we, no one wants to admit it, but you know, when you're manually doing stuff, you could quite easily forget to update the value uh, when you have 10 things connected. So av avoiding that is very important. And when we're looking at uh, our requirement analysis, it's much more efficient since it updates automatically. We have once again, a matrix to be able to test uh, while we're testing things to ensure the verification status of all of our requirements, and we can get a better insight into our implementation process. Where did we implement requirements and what's the status of them? Uh, Data-driven calculation engine is that whole idea of the information propagating through uh, between the different areas and being able to have better impact analysis so we can optimize and iterate. As I was talking earlier, the most important thing is to be able to iterate our hardware development in a fashion more similar to software, right? Uh, we don't need to finish all our prototypes to iterate on our designs. And with that comprehensive compliance and risk management, being able to create action plans for any issues, um, make clear decisions that we have evidence to back up later. Uh, if we make decisions 
it's quite easy to forget them the next day why we did it. So having that level of communication in one place is very helpful. You can consolidate all that information into reports to give you a level of traceability in the future as well. So you can prove that compliance to other people. And um, with, with the fact that all the requirements update in real time, you could be in the middle of one of the design phases, right? You could be on your schematic and you could see a requirement update on your live design and know, oh, I need to change this. So you can pivot immediately. From that, we are going to look at a demonstration that Boris Raskin, our product developer, or our, our product, uh, sorry, our product director <laughs> has created for us. And while we watch that, I want you to think about how many meetings you would have to be in to both talk about this requirement, establish it, implement it, put it in context, uh, the, the the level of communication for it. Uh, let's say you didn't do meetings. You have a bunch of emails. How would you do that? Uh, how many different disciplines or, or domains would you be interacting with? Uh, how many different, you know, different people are you working with? Uh, and with that, I will start. This, this is up. a demo of the Altium 365 integration with our partner Valley Space for requirements management. If you look on the left, you can see that requirements has been added to the new section in the menu in the web UI. The reason why we wanted to put it there is to make it a first class citizen in Altium 365 and show how easy we integrate with our partner Valley Space. If we open up Valley Space, we can see that there's a list of requirements in our Valley Space project requirements module. I'm going to create a link between the propulsion system motherboard voltage reading requirement and the schematic voltage net node in Altium 365. This will help engineers who will be reviewing and making changes to the project in the future to understand why the certain voltage was selected in the motherboard PCB. First, we're going to create the link in context of the schematic sheet. We're going to open the requirements panel and click link requirements. Then select the net and search for the requirement by number or any keywords of the requirement. This will run a query for requirements in our Valley Space project that we showed earlier. To get more information about the requirement, we can click the link to Valley Space, which will open up Valley Space in a new window to show that requirement. If we go back to the project, we can now add any comments and even turn this link into a task to assign to someone so that they can be notified. And they will also be not notified if additional comments are made here. We'll now see how the link is very circular. We can open up Valley space from the requirement link in the A365. And if we do that, we can see that there's also a link from Valley space now into Altium 365 directly to this particular requirement as well. So there's this circular reference that makes it easy to keep track of design decisions that are made as a result of a requirement. Back in Valley Space, there are multiple verification methods for the propulsion, including Altium 365 and analysis. So analysis is already verified, meaning someone has analyzed it and marked it verified in Valley Space. Now the Altium 365 verification method is still not verified. So we can also control that directly from Altium 365 by clicking that bubble. As you can see, the verification status is updated both in Altium 365 and Valley Space, and it's also indicated as fully verified. If we change it back to not verified, we'll see that the status uh, goes back to not fully verified. 
This concludes the demo. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Boris. Okay, so let's do a quick summary on, on what we just saw. So going back to the three major areas we discussed a little bit ago, accelerating our design process, analyzing the change impact, and automating our risk, uh, risk assessments and compliance. So we are, first of all, going to greatly reduce the time uh, needed by eliminating the need to switch between platforms and to appropriately identify the context of the requirements. The dynamic requirement navigation and the real-time data links in the design files provide that immediate context. And uh, it, it makes it incredibly easy and quick to see what is relevant here uh, in, in this image, we have uh, one point that is directly connected over to the requirements uh, and we can navigate between the different areas. That bidirectional linkage is really important. It allows us to operate in the method that is most natural to us. Uh, if, if we're more on the electrical side, I might be more comfortable operating with the requirements within the schematic or layout. Whereas uh, as a system engineer, I might prefer to be in Valley space. So giving you the opportunity to work in an environment and communicate in a way that's most natural to you. Uh, with that bi-directional linkage, we also have better traceability and it is in real time as Boris showed changing the information on either side it will propagate through in a matter of seconds uh and and you know he literally had two tabs open and was communicating with himself but you can imagine uh now that person is on the other side of the world right uh that you still have that same level of speed and uh level of communication once again in the context of the design and in the context of the requirement connecting that immediately without any need to uh, further explain your design intent uh, and if you make any changes you are able to see it quickly and and get a better understanding of the impact of those changes that's going to help you automate your uh, verification as well with all the visual indicators we saw being able to just quickly uh, verify something uh, that has been placed on the design is very powerful. You don't have to leave your environment to, to do anything. Um, you just continue on with your process and eliminate all those tiny steps of, of switching context and all those seconds uh, add up. Right. We, we saw uh, the propagation earlier in that example with the the uh, car battery, all that information propagating through um, to give us a better insight into the effects throughout the different design phases and essentially reducing a lot of the manual redundancies of putting new information and making sure that everyone understands the context and where it applies. So we saw several ways to use the requirements in, in, in the design context. Uh, right now it was in the schematic. In this image, you have it on the layouts. Uh, we are now trying to work personally with, with all of you. Uh, if you want to interact more with us on the development of this product, more places you would like to see this these requirements, you know, let's say the bill of materials or a mechanical environment, for, for example, that's the type of stuff we want to learn more about. So you can reach out to me, uh, David Haboud at Altium.com or Boris Raskin, Boris.Raskin. Uh, at altium.com and and we will follow up with that but just to kind of close it out um, when we don't have systems in place to mitigate unexpected changes all of our actions are completely reactionary and ad hoc so there's no way to replicate them in the future there's no level of predictability to our process we can't learn well because we don't have the context 
all the time. And fortunately, Requirements Manager helps us prevent these mistakes and eliminate all these tiny redundancies to allow us to iterate design prototypes faster and prevent a respin of 46,000, <laughs> right? No one wants to do a respin. The, the industry is all about get it right the first time. So we are trying to help move that along. So I'm going to open it up to Q&A and you know, any, any feedback. And the last thing I want to say is on average, the Valley Space user sees a 30% reduction of time on administrative tasks. So I'm going to start it up by asking you, what are you going to do with that free time? Thank you.